All right. Oh, good. Hi, how you doing? I apologize. That's I had in the Zoom, and I was going to confirm again, but I had in our Zoom chat, in the it says 1130. Ooh, so, I, so I'm doing a consult. So I, uh, are you there? You are able to hear me? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, see, I had 11.30, sis, so I apologize. Confusion. I thought our time, 9.30 p.m. is 11.30 morning at your place. That is what I thought. So anyways, welcome, Dr. Anita. And so happy to have you here. We have got connected for some time. Maybe you are on pause. Uh, your your yeah. Yeah. So you are joining from two places. Some network issue, maybe? Hi. 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 <laughs> this is, this is. Other, other uh, picture of yours is frozen. Yeah. Some network issue, maybe? Yeah. You are on mute, Anita. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why it keeps going. Maybe some network issue. Yeah, yeah. So she is Dr. Anita and uh, she has a very interesting profile as per me. Uh, I thought she is a metaphysicist and uh, she also is working with prisoners. And uh, I have seen her getting uh, interviewed by few people where she is talking about women empowerment as well. And uh, sorry, she is gone on and off some network issues maybe, but be patient. She will be joining back. Yes, there she is. Uh, I don't know why it keeps going out. Do you <laughs> have like an ID number that maybe, I don't know what, this has never happened to me before. So yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay, it's streaming light. Okay, maybe it won't do it anymore. But yeah, it kept going out for some reason. I don't Any, know. Anyways, anyways, uh, ah. not to worry. Like say the universe plays its uh, pranks, you know, when two people are trying to meet. <laughs> and I, I trust so much. And uh, I was introducing you to my audience. Uh, this is getting live streamed also in my Facebook. Mm. Okay. And, uh, all the all the people are watching there, so uh, hey, I I, <laughs> I wanted uh, it to be live stream in the stream yard, but that uh, somehow it didn't work out. Maybe you are not very comfortable with stream yard, so um, yeah. stream yard has a, a tendency to freeze up on me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was introducing you to be a very interesting person. We have been connected for some time now. And uh, I saw you uh, your, in your profile. It is written that uh, you also work with prisoners. But I also saw you being interviewed by a couple of other interviewers as women empowerment, uh, maybe, and uh, metaphysicist, then soul trans transformer all those kind of things. So I'm a bit confused. Can you <laughs> introduce yourself and tell a bit about it? I'm sure it is very, very interesting. Yes. What you say, what is it that you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah. do? <laughs> well, it's good to be, um, you know, just sharing and connecting with you this, yeah. this morning for me and this evening for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So, um, as far as me, well, first, you know, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of beautiful twin girls. 
Okay. And uh, a handsome, two handsome sons-in-law and grandma's precious five. Okay. Grandma yeah. also. Your grandma too? No, no, not me. What about you? Oh, yes. I'm a grandmother. I have five grandchildren. Okay. Yes, okay. I do. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. I have one, yes, one 15-year-old, two uh, 10-year-olds, and two 13-year-olds. Because I have twin. I have my daughters are twins. So okay. they were pregnant twice at the same time. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. So tell us about your work, uh, Dr. Anita. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. So well, one, that, is, that so sounds like an Indian name. Uh, do you have any Indian connection as well? Um, no, let me see. You mean Anita? No, your, your your name, Anita. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, see, no, I only know that that Anita, uh, like it's, it's Hebrew and uh, Spanish. Um, okay. But in India, no, my my father, uh, you know, my uh, not India, but my my father, Native American. My father is from the Cherokee Blackfoot okay. tribe. So yeah, but not India. You, you know, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, see, I didn't know that Anita was was uh, a name in India. That's so cool. Yeah, so very common name. Actually, I have two cousins who are named as Anita. So okay, I cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you learn something new every day. So I'm going to incorporate that. Next time someone asks me my name, I said, well, India, Hebrew, and, and Spanish. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because we yeah. are small sisters, right? So that's right. That's <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. Um, yeah, what I'm I'm honored to one, I'm honored to serve as global chair for prison reforms. You mentioned prison. Yeah, I spent 15, uh, I'm sorry, 19 years with Michigan Department of Corrections. 15 of those years was pre-commitment, which is probation where people are not sentenced in, inside of, of, of a prison. And then I spent four years in the uh, maximum male, male prison system. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so when I left in 1998, I was working in the penal system, the male the housing, housing our brothers. Um, yeah, so, and, and I'm, I'm so honored to serve as um, Global All Ladies League G100 Prison Reforms and Reintegration Global Chair. We all know our beautiful sister, Dr. Harbina Rua Wright, the founder and the visionary. So that, and that's a relatively new wing. So we're we're going to be meeting tomorrow, which I'm so excited about because we're going to start uh, planning how to whatever how to uh, reform, do our best in 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 reforming what needs to what procedures or methods need to be reformed and ways that we can help our sisters uh, integrate back into society. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. 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 So that's a great service, uh, Anita. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure, like I say, it, it, might, it must be a very challenging job for you as well, uh, like getting out of your comfort zone reaching out to those souls who, which are very troubled in their lives, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, you know, that uh, doing work like that uh, to, to help someone, I mean, uh, that's just always been something in me. I just always wanted to inspire you know, more you know more inside to help people inside more inspire encourage and uplift and i think that's because you know life has has graced me with opportunities challenges to learn how to be empathetic to understand the plights of others so i've always even as a little girl you know i've always been the one that rooted for that 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 little engine that could. So that's just, yeah. So that's just a big, really big major part of me as far as challenges, comfort zone. Um, when I left Michigan Department of Corrections 
uh, I served 19 years there, and I left on a wing and a prayer. So yeah, I was definitely, <laughs> I was definitely moving out of my comfort zone because I left without. Um, it wasn't that I retired or anything like that. I just left on faith because I wanted to. I wanted to really understand my relationship with the universe, with the creator, God, Allah, you know, Yahweh, however you want to say, yep, higher self, higher power. Um, so that was that was stepping out of a comfort zone because I had a good job and good health benefits and everything. So that was definitely stepping out of a comfort zone. And then just even recently, uh, challenges learning how I have a, a foundation, which is called the Empowerment Through Spoken Word a Help to Heal Foundation, spoke more poetry. And lately, um, there's been opportunities to learn how to reach out to um, where things may be may have been uncomfortable or way, where I may have been even timid or a little shy to, to reach out. Well, I'm learning that it's okay to be timid and shy, but like Susan, uh, what was her, Susan Haywood, uh, Haywood uh, the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. So it's okay yeah. to feel shy. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel those things. Just do it anyway. So recently, yeah, I've been experiencing, like I said, opportunity blessings to uh, what we call challenges. I've been experiencing those blessings to be able to um, make my way out of the comfort zone so that I, I'm able to learn new things and, and learn the experience of what it feels like stepping out of the comfort zone and then doing it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty challenging, I must say. I must say. And it is a great conviction as well as faith on your, pa in, on your part. I think so. And uh, oh, yeah. when I think about that, when I think while you were speaking, I was thinking whether I can take such a step and I was like separate, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe as, as a woman, uh, people, uh, we, we kind of uh, have to take those kind of decisions to transform the world. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I still believe that uh, it is more more good than it is bad. Absolutely. That I, I understand that. But still, you see so much of pain going around, so much of you no know, helplessness. Uh, I, I still think that there is a lot to be done. And uh, we, all of us, need to be together, no? In conviction Absolutely. and faith, yes. Absolutely. I mean, faith is that. I was just sharing with a claimant just yesterday for her hearing, because I help unemployed workers get their, their benefits, uh, and I represent them before administrative law judges. And yesterday I was sharing with her, you know, I said, you know, because a lot of times, you know, they'll say, I'm afraid. And I said, of course you are. That's, that's, that's to be, that's to understand. I said, and that, that energy is going to work with you. I said, however, I said, now I said, challenges, when these blessings come up, what they also do is share with us the level of our faith. And like for me, if I'm experiencing a challenge, which is, which I'm learning our blessings, I asked myself, I said, do you need to up the game on your faith? And if you need to up the game on your faith, start saying, okay, okay, Father, Mother, God, I believe, help my unbelief. But I was sharing with her, I said, it's okay. I said, because if your faith is to a point where you're okay with it, then you're not going to be experiencing so much where it's physiologically damaging your organs and like with high blood pressure and, and, and tension. I said, however, if you are in that space, then all that means is you, you want to up the game of your faith. And then, and if you start saying, okay, father, mother, God, or however we, we term uh, the, the, you, you know, the creator, whatever, when we start concentrating on help me with my faith, I said, guess what you've done? Now you've taken your thought away from whatever you are afraid of. So whichever happens, it's all good. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's 
all good because I mean, I mean, it, it absolutely it 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 it, it deals with with faith. That's to me that's that's number one. And, and whatever you believe in, I, whatever it is, and whatever that helps you take those steps and and make those moves, knowing that you're not by yourself. And that's when you mention like helplessness and things like that. That really gets to my heart because for me, when 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 we're and for me speaking for me. And, and I know that I'm not alone. Times that I felt helpless, because I have, there are times we all have. Times that I felt fear, paralyzing fear. Times that I felt those things. It is because at that point, I, I knew, I understood that there was a, a creator. I understood that there was a God that could help me. I did not know it in here. And once I started going to there saying, hey, you know what, if the seed or the love, if the power, presence, the essence of love of God is within me, then there's no reason for me to feel hopeless because I know I can tap into that place, that secret place in my heart that I can tap into and get all the love and, and ideas and encouragement and guidance that I need. So my thing now is that, you know what? Yeah, let's cut. Let's let's we can still talk about our limitations and our human frailties. But my message now is okay, let's balance that out and let's have a conversation on our divinity because we are human and we are divine. You, you know what I mean? And now, my message when I whenever I can, I say absolutely within our imperfection, yes, there too rests perfection. And and I really believe for me, I believe. When we really start to become to know that true, because it is a true. I mean, in all the divine educate, all the divine educators, and all of the books and holy books, there's a mentioning of our connection with the universe or God or whatever. And once we start actually saying, okay, enough of this, you know, not good enough, not worthy, not deserving, enough of that, and say, okay, let me bring up my divinity. I really believe, beautiful, I really believe the suicide rates are going to go down. I really believe. I really believe that people, our self-esteem is going to start rising, and not out of arrogance, but out of pure humility, knowing, because when sometimes when I think about how the, how, how, how the power, presence, and love of God is within us, it just, it makes me so humble just to know that, oh my God. God, it's just a beautiful thing. You can't be arrogant. I mean, I mean, you don't know because you're so in awe with it. So I, that's that's where I am. I, I really am because it breaks my heart when I see people that that are. I mean, I and I don't want to get emotional because I'm emotional and I'm sensitive and I can cry at the drop of a hat. My daughters always say they give me a card. They say, "Open it up later, Mama. Don't do it now because we know you're gonna cry." You know, so <laughs> so I know and I know I'm a sensitive person. Um, and I can feel it. But it breaks my heart when I when 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 I hear that the, you know the suicide rate. It breaks my heart when I think of someone being so helpless, feeling like they're so alone. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that's so untrue. Though we are never alone, never, none of us. Yes, so profound, so profound. I I feel like you go on and on and on. As you know, Anita, like say in Indian system, there is there is this system of chakras, you know, and it goes from down from bottom of uh, our spine to uh, even a feet higher up our head. Yes, and the entire thing. And when it goes there, I don't know, physically it goes or the energy gets elevated or something, then actually all of us in Indian system, they try to unblock those energy chakras, you know, they, those centers of energy that needs to be unblocked so that the energy goes up. And when it goes up, like say, when it reaches the topmost position, then you are in Maha Samadhi or the feeling that you are expressing it is almost equal to that. But how to start? How to just step into that secret zone, that secret and sacred zone that you were speaking about? 
i think that is the most difficult thing to do and uh, if i ask you is there a step by step system how to step into that zone at the moment the moment you need that like say you feel afraid you feel helpless you just step into that zone so how can you describe that if you have no. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, stepping into that zone, you know, it's 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 all a matter of knowing, um, knowing that part that's in us, and but knowing and understanding. I'm I'm gonna go deeper than knowing, understanding that that there is a higher power within yeah. us, you know, that we can tap into, um. I think starting though, and, and I share with people starting, you know, like I, I'm the tap, in, I, I tap into you movement. That's, that's my uh, LLC, tap into you. It's all about field-centric psychology, God-centered living. We, 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 all of the answers, like even in coaching, like if you're a coach, you know, the first thing about coaching is that you don't, you don't tell people how to go. What you do is ask them questions so that they come up with their own answer. That's what any psychologist, psychologist, psychiatrist, psychologist, that's what that's what they do. Hmm. Well, the thing here, the the thing here is that in order to tap into what we have on the inside, we have to trust it. And it just it, and, and in order to do that, we have to start on the outside. Because if you know, it's like if I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And I don't trust who I see. I don't trust me because every time if I come across a dilemma or 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 a, a blessing, a challenge, and I'm always going outside, hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And and it's okay to go to people because we innately belong, need to need to have a sense to belong. That's as, as, as important as we breathe. But if if my position is that every time I'm experiencing something, my first my first act is to go outside of myself to ask others what their opinion is. All I'm doing is saying, I don't trust what's in here. I don't trust me. So if I don't trust me that I look in the mirror, there's no way I'm going to trust the spirit, the soul within me, because what I don't see. There's a you know great, great teacher that says, how can you say you love me who you don't see when, when you don't love the brother or the sister next to you, who you do see, you've got to, you've got to start with what on the physical, the physical. You got to start with the physical world, loving what we see, in order to go into the metaphysical world of that what we don't see. So starting, I would say, starting is trusting, loving, and trusting that image that you see in the mirror knowing that that there is perfection within whatever imperfection you may see and that and that that's where it is and and then that grows it, it, it's a matter of, of of growing that intuition growing that instinct like you mentioned chakras our solar plexus is that uh, base and solar plexus is that instinct our sacral brow that's our intuition and then our crown is just all of them kind of thing so it's just a matter of um, it's just a matter of learning to trust. You know, I was sure with people. I said, if you want to learn, you know, even learning how to uh, up the game on your intuition. When you go to a store, go, just something simple. Going to a store, and if, and, and if something says to you, get that banana. Don't question it. Just get the banana because once you get that banana and take it home, at some point before you eat that banana or something, you're going to realize, oh, that's why I got that banana. So when we start small, we start learning, oh, I can trust that. I can trust that voice. Yes, yes. That inner voice, you we can trust. Sometimes it so happens that we trust. We it is unmistakable, right? It is there, undoubtedly. It is there so clear. At times, even it is clear, we are not trusting that, you know? And, uh, and as a result, the negativity, the fear, all those things come in and then you kind of, you are lost. There is 
nothing nothing that for which you would uh, do something or not do something why you exist and those questions of existence also come up and uh, you know it feels feels so helpless like say when you are saying trust i'm i'm saying it's so easy to gain as you are describing it's so easy but it is so easy so easy also not to not right. to get there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so, <laughs> so so do you follow any regular routine wherein you sustain whatever you have already already into you have gone there reached out there is there a routine that you follow uh, oh yeah there uh, well the routine i i i me i'm a gratitude journal person okay. and not in narrative um at night uh, and and i don't i'm gonna be real i don't do it seven days a week uh, I do do it four days out of that week because anytime when I don't gratitude journal, uh, say if I don't gratitude journal in two or three days in a row, I begin to feel the shift of energy. So I start gratitude journaling. Um, and, and my gratitude journal, like I said, I don't do a narrative. I just write 11 things that I that occurred during the day that I'm grateful for. Now, sis, yeah, sometimes those 11 things can come right, you know, bam, 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 bam. Sometimes those 11 things, I'll be like, okay, I'm only on number three. Okay, only on that. And then I tell myself, I said, now, see, there's some things that went past you that you you lack gratitude. You need to see it. So I said, okay. Now, now my fifth, my fifth and sixth one, I have one that I always have number five. And that's, that's you know, that's supposed to, and then my sixth one, my mother made her transition um, some years ago. My mind don't keep track of years that people make their transition. Um, but my mother made her transition some time ago. However, that sixth entry on my journal is uh, uh, um, my, uh, my, I'm, gratitude, I'm grateful for the love and guidance. Because I always say Ma's love and guidance, that she is here with me. So that is always my number six. And then I just do from one to, to 11. And then there's just a little pair, pair, paragraph um, of something. So it's like a page. So that's like a routine. And then um, ever since we did in my Tap Into You room, uh, and this is really newly incorporated, since, since, we, since in my Tap Into You room, I found something about the gratitude, uh, something. And we, and we created this book about saying thank, thank you 30 times a day. So, I, and I love, I loved it and, and things that happened during, you know, that time. So I've incorporated, I, I, I don't do it every, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, it's becoming a habit. So my routine also is what I'm, what I'm, um, what I'm doing and trying to do is say, I'm thank to be thankful for 30, 30 times per day. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. uh, recently, how do you explain this experience of mind? So last two days, uh, uh, as as I'm listening to you, uh, like say the negativity is going away and I, I have started remembering what has been huge for me last two days. And uh, so speaking to you, it helps, you know, otherwise, even though such things have happened huge still at the moment when you are feeling low still you forget even if it is so recent as today morning so i whatever has been coming to me you know i never thought about that never imagined about that but it came and i was speaking it aloud you know while walking to my office uh, it is a 20 minutes walk um getting down from the metro and so it came suddenly out of nowhere and i started speaking aloud and whatever i spoke i didn't believe at all so it was oh. such as if somebody was telling me uh, um pointing to some time back when i had a similar kind of thought process 
No, that time also I didn't believe any of that. And that has come back again, yesterday and today again. Yesterday it was in full force. I was almost shouting on the road while I'm, and today it was little uh, toned down, but still it was there. And when I started feeling, it was like say going great. I thought it was as if like a chanting, you know, I was chanting something. Wow. So it was effortless. I never thought what all those things were. It, it, if I describe it to myself also, it seems very bizarre kind of thing, but it has happened, you know. Uh, so um, I'm connecting to those moments when you're saying, you know, connecting with it. What I'm trying to understand is we all have such kind of experiences some time or other. I'm pretty sure. Oh, absolutely. The only thing is, we don't retain those kind of feeling, which is why, and those are immense feeling, uh, feeling actually. Still, we because we don't retain, we fall back mm -hmm. to the original state of, what do you say, helplessness, negativity or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel good. Is it, you, you will say, is it, a kind of the mind that keeps us blocked or uh, is it at the mind level? Is it at the brain level? Because you know, the brain is a survival brain. Anything new, it, it you know, stops you because it poses as a threat. Even if you are uh, giving yourself a new task, something out of your comfort zone, the brain stops saying that you don't have time, you don't have, uh, uh, you don't need to do, that there is a lot of risk, no self-talk, it happens. Maybe in experiencing divinity, the brain is behaving the same way. Uh, what What is your take on that? Um, what, you know, I believe like um, we, our decisions, Many of our decisions and many of our thoughts are based on prior experience, personal experience, prior history, professional, academic, our education, and our self-worth. And this is all, you know, yesterday. I believe once we get to that understanding, and, and, and in, in a class that I'm taking now, they, they call it uh, intellectual evaluation comprehension. In other words, my intellect is evaluating the, the data that is incoming to me, and then I evaluate it and assess it, but I'm doing it based on the past. And my thing is that, okay, once we recognize, like if I'm making a decision, um, like say if I, you know, I may say, okay, I want to be in a relationship, but I'm shying away from having an intimate relationship you know, I'm kind of still shy, you know, I want to, but then I'm, I'm afraid asking, okay, well, what is, what occurred in the past that prevents you? And it could be because maybe someone didn't treat me as nice. So I, today I'm reflecting on, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing that path to, to, to not alter, but to remain constant in my thoughts. So once we understand that this intellectual, because because intellect is is ego, intellect is the surface of the thought. You know that 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 truth, that that love is in our deep, not not the not the surface areas of our heart, because our our, our surface areas just like the earth, the crust. You know, have the mantles. Um, that's where you know bitterness and whatever grudges are held. But deep in that center, you know, like the Egyptians say, deep in our center, that's where that. That 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 truth is. That's where that spirit lies, way in that center. So once we, to me, you know, once I recognize one that uh, that that this is the reality that that I'm I'm in right now, and also to understand that my consciousness, where I was in the past, I'm not there anymore. 
So for me to make a decision based on the past is, is kind of living in the past because that's not fair. So for me, my thing is, is once we understand, like even when I make a decision, I might make a decision and say, okay, well, I'm going to do it this way. And, and even if I'm shying away, it's not the fact that I'm shying away. What, what, what is the awakening to me, for lack of a better word, is that I recognize why I'm making that decision. So it's not the decision in and of itself. It is the understanding of why I did it. And when I understand that, okay, you're, 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 you're making that decision based on past, like I said, past experience, personal relationships, past history, your, your professional achievements, or your, you know, or, or how you felt yourself in, in the past as far as self-worth which has nothing to do with today. Now, the past got us here, praise God. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, do what I want to go back and do everything over again? No. <laughs> but am I glad that it has happened? Absolutely, because it got me where I am today. So that's what I, I think. It's just being aware that our intellect it is that intellect that's going to say, no, 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 no. Uh, you, you know, who you think you're crazy? Because our soul and our spirit would never talk with us that way because that is not love wow. you know now, now you know what i mean so now it might be a gentle like ah, ah, ah because there is such a thing as a protective negative like mm -mm, don't go down that road but it won't be you can't do you and never so anytime we hear that limitation thing that that stinking thinking that that downgrading or or that 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 is nothing but the intellect trying to keep us at bay that's all and once we realize that, say, okay, go on, sit down, uh, Madam E, uh, Madam Intellect, <laughs> I'm going to move on. Then I think that they'll, you know, we'll experience some changes. So profound, Anita, it is. Like the two things, <laughs> it, it has hit me. Intellectual evaluation, comprehension, whatever you are saying, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put that as you know as a mock thing for myself. Whenever I have that kind of situation, I'll tell myself it is IEC, and uh, I, you know, <laughs> so oh, IEC. I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> IEC, <laughs> and it is so so funny, and uh, and so easily you have just explained that it is just intellectual. It has nothing to do with whatever true, our no. true self. Yes, and Absolutely. and this is such a such a revelation. No, everybody knows, but they don't realize. Uh, right. Me included, right. and uh, yeah. So this is such a oh. <laughs> yeah, and I and I have to give props because I'm a believer. Yes, yeah, it's, it's this this course of is is a theocentric psychology and, and the the founder and creator of this. This, this stellar program is Dr. Paul Leon Masters. So he's the founder of the International Metaphysical uh, Ministries uh, uh, in Arizona and, and uh, uh, Sedona. So that's where, yeah, that's where that information came from because it's called, called intuitive living, it, it, uh, all channel living. It's like once we understand that, that a lot of things are based on the past history, experience, uh, education, and self-worth, once we understand that, then we can we can move forward to go into all channel living and start listening and start listening because now we 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 recognize that this is intellect like that IEC like you just said I love that I'm gonna say that <laughs> that IEC so once we understand that then 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 we can move, we move past it just organically it's not like we have to and one thing I'm loving sis is I'm learning that all of this is not difficult. It's not, you know, oh my God, oh me, I got to do all this. It is fun. We can have fun with this thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, Just fun, learning about who we are and, and what we yeah. have, and that we're all one, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, that we're all connected. Like me and you, I, I said, I said, man, ain't number one energy, one love. And we're connected yeah. with that one energy. And so if we're connected with that one energy, one love, that means we're connected, right? Yeah. So when you feel that ICE, so do I. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And it is such a miracle that we got connected also in a 
in a very strange kind of group i somehow i happened to be there you also were there and we got connected you saw my post i haven't seen i hadn't seen your post till that time when we got connected and still we got connected and now i have started seeing you no know, um, your post as well and people are uh, interviewing you also and uh, yeah and more and more of you i i uh, this cannot come in in just one interview many people have to you no know, talk to you so that you no know, your essence will come out uh, to the world and uh, i'm i'm sure it is a, it's a great thing that is happening you no know, uh, on my page whatever i am able to see and uh, this thing and so so tell me what are you thinking about the future and being in this group how how can we contribute more being part of that group uh, i am obviously posting whatever comes to my mind and and i am posting in this group that group uh, and also i post in g100 uh, so what do you think that we should be doing uh, together at the same time i you know um for for me it's 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 all about like you know when i see you it's about enhancing each other's recognition you know what i mean my my thing is it's like you know I, i'm going to i'm going to show i'm going to do you the way i want to be treated so if i want if i put something out on facebook um why do we put just for instance why do we put things out on facebook because we want engagement right not that that you know we wouldn't do it i mean yeah. if we just want to put we want we want encouragement that's that's natural so my thing is if if i put something out there and i want encouragement well dog gone i'm going to i'm going to share my sister's post because i know that's what she wants too you, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean so i i just for me it's it's like you know i i'm going to treat you like i want to be treated and and i'm learning i'm learning i like to be treated with lots of love so i'm going to treat you with lots of love yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, so so easily you have put it so simplistically you no know, a very complicated kind of uh, uh, what we see logic we can say or whatever it is you no know? so, right right yeah but yeah. yeah it's just yeah so, just just loving it's, it's each other great, and, and, and great uh, tell me about your childhood days if you mm-hmm. in mind about your childhood days where you uh, grew up how uh, about oh. your parents i i see that you are very close to your mother yeah yeah tell about yeah. that uh, yeah i grew up grew up like in in, in uh us in the, in the city of detroit michigan um my childhood um um i it was uneventful and then eventful at the same time uh you know challenges just like everybody else uh kind of thing my teen years and uh i did have an issue with self esteem kind of thing i think so many of us you know did and um i've been writing you know my childhood consists of my poetry cuz i've been writing poetic affirmations i you know at least oh my gosh you know over 50 years so that's been a big part of me um learning um like i said i've always even as a child we call it the underdog i've always rooted for that that underdog uh, kind of thing i've always been sensitive you know cry at the drop of a hat <laughs> you know my my mother um yes that grew before you know before my mother made her transition we became best friends it wasn't like that growing up um you know because we all do our best you know it's like my mother did the best she could with what she knew and just like i did the best i could with my daughters with what i knew so um growing up it 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 was um yeah there 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 were challenges i've learned lessons you know one in particular i'll never forget side by side in in, in my neighborhood we had I had we had neighbors one lived over here and one lived here this neighbor was 
um, was very destructive, negative, and, and always had problems. The way of thinking, you know, their thinking was just doom and gloom. This other neighbor on the opposite side, both the same age, this one was so positive and grateful and full of life, same age. What taught me years later, what I was so happy as a child, the universe showed me this lesson was that it's all about what, how you think. Because this one here that was grumpy and everything, walked on a cane and, and couldn't hardly stand straight up. The, their thought, this one here was just as bouncy and everything. And then I was fortunate to, to, to have a grandfather who, although he was atheist, who wild birds would come and perch on his shoulder because he was that in tune with nature. You know, we would walk down the alley and, and dogs would smile at him because he was that in tune, although he he didn't believe because he didn't believe in a God or anything because he couldn't understand how it could be so much pain and so much, you know, uh, 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 so much destruction in, in in the world if there was a higher being that could change it. So that was, you know, that was it. But, you know, we would have... I, I had the blessing of having so many conversations with him, me as a believer, he as a non-believer, and I would share with him, I would say, granddaddy, you're the most spiritual man I've ever met in my life. That taught me it's not about religion. So I was blessed to learn that it's about what's in your, it doesn't matter, it's what's in your heart. You know what I mean? So that, so I, I, those are the things that stuck out and, and stuck out. And another thing that he was of a different race because he married my grandmother um, and he was Dutch and his, his, his father disowned him because here he was this white man marrying this black woman way back in the day that you just didn't do it. But that taught me also love. So he, you know, I, I was just blessed to learn so much, not about lesson stuff like reading books or, or even just um, life. I was blessed to learn about the goodness of just because of the goodness. And and I, I just say that I'm just so blessed and grateful, you know, for that. My, you know, yeah. Wow. Wow. So very early on, uh, this yeah. this belief system was built into you very strong because of the circumstances, because of the neighbors, because of your family members, how you spoke uh, with them, and it's very strange that uh, no, you you as a child you have been a believer while a grown-up person he was a non-believer. Yeah. And still you withstood, not giving up. And this is amazing, you know, uh, as a child, many people will give in to whatever the elder one is saying, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yes, yes, and that is that is something everybody should learn because we, we, we learn from them only, right? Uh, how, we, uh, how we get uh, ourselves framed is how our elders think and behave and whatever their belief system only we get and that belief system creates a lot of confusion in us for a long time if it is conflicting with you know your own understanding of the world and the higher power and also a parent you respect a grandparent you respect also saying the contradictory thing so yeah, I now understand why those really, confusion are within yes. Yes, speaking yes. to you, and yes. it is such a blessing for me that I'm speaking to you. Getting oh, same here, I'm the same here, beautiful, absolutely. You know, it, it's like to me now. I recognize it, in my mind. I think, wow, it's like it's like the universe was saying, "I'm going to show you this now, but you won't understand till years later." But I'm gonna show you this now, and that's you know, and that's that's the way that's the way I look at it. No, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm yeah. So no, no, for me to be able to share that because I've not shared that about my grandfather. Um, you know, I can't I can't remember. I mean, I've written about it because I wrote a poem about him in his shoes. 
Um, so I thank you. I, I'm honored. I'm, I'm so grateful for you, for for your love and 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 your your warmness that 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 was that memory was able to come to me at this point right here and now, and that's because of you. And I thank you for that. I love you. I thank you for that. You've just given me something very, 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 very special. So thank you. So this is a crucial uh, time in uh, in my life also, as I said. Something that has that has been uh, spoken to me, and I also was speaking out loud. It came like uh, no some you see it's. Uh, somebody as if somebody is saying something before him no uh, it, it was about me reaching somewhere some place someday and right now i am nowhere near that still it is being spoken to me so that i i be convinced that that is where i should be going to and uh, this is also for the same reason that I should uh, no, uh, uh, hold myself together, uh, not getting you no know, spread uh, spread across so many things or uh, no getting getting uh, uh, broken into smaller pieces or not trusting all those things. You know, it, it just give me a conviction. So. I am sure uh, your whatever, wherever and whoever you are speaking to gets this kind of feeling within. Um, and, and that is a great thing, great thing. And uh, uh, we have been speaking for an hour and oh, I st wow. we, still, <laughs> we still have so much, like say, I, this is something which I want to hear more and more and more. Um, but we can speak another time. And so, thank you so much, Anita, for being oh, no, here. Thank you. <laughs> and and we'll keep connected, and we'll be yeah. you know, working together in some way or other. And uh, do please find out where we can contribute together. Anyway, okay. G eleven G hundred is having one uh, seminar here at Delhi, so I am also have been chosen as a speaker. So I'm going oh, to attend here. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, I almost had ignored that mail, you know, uh, just two days back, somebody in LinkedIn reached out to me uh -huh. saying that I saw you being a speaker there. Uh, I, I didn't remember any mail about that. Uh -huh. Then I searched my email. I saw that email. I, I, completely forgot. I didn't even open that email, you know, just because wow. of this. So now I understand that there is a bigger purpose why I got connected to that and I should you know, keep there connected. Uh, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> that is you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Not because I know you're going to be, I know you're going to be absolutely awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> not because of that, that I am a speaker, but because there is a bigger purpose to it. Not because I am speaking there for three minutes, five minutes or whatever. But I I now understand that there is a bigger purpose why I am connected there. And I have a lot more to do out there. So That's right. This is, this is, feels like something, some, not, not any less than a miracle, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank yeah, you. This is beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Anita, for being here, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you so much. Please for do, please do. I love you, sis. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>